Hello everyone, this is uh, Seher again for uh, your biochemistry review. So let us start with this. Okay, so here we can see different uh, contents to start with biochemistry where we have the physical chemical principles chapter, the biological compound, molecular biology and finally the metabolic pathways. Okay, now we can discuss some more points about uh, enzymes here. So some of the examples of the metallic coenzymes like magnesium is important for hexokinase, glucose 6-phosphatase, zinc is for carbonic anhydrase, iron for catalase, copper for cytochrome oxidase and you can see the classification of enzyme, oxidoreductase, transferases, hydrolases, isomerases, lyase and legacies and what reaction they are catalyzing that you can go through it. Now an enzyme is made up of coenzyme, apoenzyme, so coenzyme which is a non-protein part of the enzyme, apo is a protein part and halo is a complete catalytically active enzyme. So for halo to be active, both apo and coenzyme should bind together. Now this is very important, this is called as the induced fit model. So induced fit model is when the substrate binding induces a conformational change, so if uh, the substrate uh, let's say A and B is binding to the active site of the enzyme, it will change the shape of the active enzyme. And changing the shape of the active enzyme will produce energy that is going to initiate the reaction. Now we can see there are different factors that enzyme influence the reaction rate of the enzyme. So in this page you can see competitive, uncompetitive, non-competitive affecting Vmax and Km. And we can see some explanatory good pics of them as well. Now we can see the allosteric regulation. So allosteric enzyme is a special kind of enzyme which has the active site for the substrate and the allosteric site for the allosteric regulator. Now once this allosteric regulator binds to the allosteric site, it is going to change the shape of active enzyme, active site. And changing the shape of active site can either increase the rate of reaction or decrease the rate of reaction. So this is called as allosteric regulation. Now let us say allosteric substrate is not present, then the reaction can just proceed normally with the active site, substrate and the enzyme. Now very important point you should know that michaelis menten equation is not being followed here in the allosteric regulation. Now you can see the point of feedback regulation. So feedback regulation is let's say A is a substrate, first substrate that is making B in the presence of enzyme 1, B is producing C in the presence of enzyme 2 and C is producing D in the presence of enzyme 3. So how the D or the end product of the reaction is controlling the first enzyme 1 either activating it or inhibiting it. Normally in our body, we have the negative feedback regulation. When the end product of the reaction is controlling or giving a negative feedback to the first enzyme so that you are not producing too much of D. Hormones, they have the negative feedback inhibition so that you don't produce too much of hormones like a brake mechanism that we have in our body. And we can see the protease enzymes which are breaking down the inactive into active form like the proenzymes are uh, like the zymogens. For example, trypsinogen is a zymogen, it's an inactive enzyme that is uh, activated by protease into the trypsin, that's a protein breakdown enzyme. Now we can see some of the glycogen storage diseases we have like type 1, type 2, type 3. So we'll discuss about the storage diseases. So what are actually the storage diseases? Storage diseases are, for example, A plus B substrate is making C, that is your product, in the presence of enzyme E. Now let's say enzyme E is missing or it is deficient, that means A plus B substrate cannot make the end product C. So A plus B will start getting accumulated now in your body abnormally in liver, heart, spleen, muscle and these are called as the storage diseases. So what happens in glycogen storage diseases? Glycogen is not properly broken down into glucose. So the intermediates of the glycogen breakdown, they start getting accumulated. For example, von Gerke disease is very important here. You should know the enzyme deficient here. 
glucose 6-phosphatase and the clinical feature, hepatomegaly, renomegaly, that is due to deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. Then we have pompe disease, which is lysomal glucosidase deficiency, mecardal, we have muscle glycogen phosphorylase is missing. So muscle glycogen cannot be broken down to glucose and lactic acid getting accumulated leading to muscle cramping. Now we can see the inulin. So inulin is a homopolymer of fructose, highly water soluble and you can use it to determine the GFR. Now let us talk about GAGs. So GAGs are the heteropolymer that are uh, containing repeating unit of amino sugar and the uronic acid. So two different molecules are joining here in GAGs. So GAGs are also called as body sponges because they are highly negatively charged and going to attract the water and have the cushioning effect. So we can see some mucopolysaccharide storage diseases too, like hunters, hullers. So hullers syndrome, alpha l adenylase deficiency, while hunter you have l adenylate sulfatase deficiency. That means the glycosaminoglycans or mucopolysaccharides are not properly broken down. So they start getting accumulated, heparin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, they start getting accumulated in different parts of your body. We can see that most of the storage diseases are autosomal dominant except the hunters which is X-linked recessive here. Here are the triacylglycerides. The difference between triacylglycerol and glyceride is that in triacylglycerol is a mobile form of fat in the liver while triacylglyceride is a storage form of fatty acid in the adipose tissue. So triacylglycerol or glyceride is consists of three fatty acid acylated to a single glycerol molecule. We know it's an important source of energy, but high triglyceride can always lead to atherosclerosis, heart disease, and also stroke. Now we can see the phospholipid. Phospholipid, they are made up of two fatty acid acylated to two carbons of the glycerol molecule and a phosphate group attached to it. Phospholipid, as we know, they're an important component of cell and mitochondrial membrane. Now we can see the three major types of phospholipid we have, that is lecithin, cephalin and the sphingolipid. So lecithin are made up of phosphatidylcholine, they are an important component of choline. And cephalin, as we know, it's a nervous tissue component, while sphingomyelin, they make the uh, important component of melanin, myelin sheath, nervous tissue component. And major component, major constituent of sphingomyelin is ceramide, found in the nervous tissue. You can go through more details of them here. Now we can see here about some of the lipid storage diseases like we have the Tay-Sachs, Fabry, they're important lipid storage diseases like uh, in case of Tay-Sachs your hexaminidase A is missing, Neiman pig disease your sphingomyelinase is missing, so sphingomyelin is not uh, metabolized and start getting accumulated. In Gawker disease glucocerebrosidase is missing, so glucocerebroside not get uh, metabolized and they start getting accumulated. In Crabe, you have galactoserbosidase missing. All of these diseases are autosomal recessive except Fabry, which is going to be X-linked recessive. Now we can see the recombinant uh, DNA toxicology and some of the clinical consideration here, like the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Reverse transcriptase enzyme is an enzyme found in HIV virus that will do the reverse transcription. That means to making DNA out of the mRNA. Now recombinant DNA technology is a very advanced field of science in which we use different types of enzymes to uh, study the DNA like restriction or endonucleus enzyme that will cleave or break the DNA at certain points to allow addition of vectors, plasmids, cosmids, macrophages. Then we have the DNA ligase enzyme that join the DNA fragments. DNA polymerase enzyme that will add the nucleotides and exonucleus enzyme. Now polymerase chain reaction is an amplification reaction that will amplify our target sequence of DNA because DNA itself is a very small molecule. In that size you can neither uh, study the DNA neither you can do any effect changes on the DNA. So you have to convert that small DNA molecule in a big DNA library and that is done by the polymerase chain reaction that is going to amplify our target sequence of DNA. So in the polymerase chain reaction, you can see this figure here. So firstly, you are denaturing the DNA sample into two strands and then you anneal the primers to each strand. 
then you copy each strand by a heat stable DNA polymerase and then you repeat the cycle resulting in exponential amplification of the sample. Now we can see different types of blotting techniques. So you identify specific DNA RNA protein fragments within a given tissue sample. That's why how the blotting techniques are being used. So you have the southern blotting, northern blotting, western blotting. So southern blotting is used to identify the DNA. Uh, northern blotting will identify the RNA, while western blotting will identify the protein. Okay, so let us see different types of metabolic pathways now. So the first one we see is glycolysis. So glycolysis, we know it's a cytoplasmic pathway that is used by all the cells to have energy from the glucose, where one glucose molecule is converted to two pyruvate molecule. And the end product will be two molecule pyruvate, two molecule ATP, and two molecule NADH. When the oxygen is present, this NADH is delivered to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria and generate ATP. But when the conditions are anaerobic, this pyruvate it will be converted to lactate. So this is important. We see the glycolysis pathway here. Most important, you should pay focus on the rate limiting steps and rate limiting enzyme. So there are three rate limiting uh, steps here where glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, where the rate limiting enzyme is hexokinase or glucokinase in the liver. Then the second one uh, rate limiting step we have is where fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in the presence of PFK1 enzyme. That's the most important rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis. So in this step, ATP is converted to ADP. That means one molecule of ATP is used up. And in the last step of glycolysis, where PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate, is converted to pyruvate in the presence of pyruvate kinase enzyme, where another molecule of ATP is being used up, uh, being generated. While in the first step of first rate limiting enzyme, where we have glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, that's where one more ATP is being used up. So rate limiting steps and enzymes are definitely important and we should know some of the deficiency features like if the pyruvate kinase enzyme is missing in this pathway, so finally pyruvate is not produced and all the glycolytic intermediate, they start getting collected in the blood cells that can lead to chronic hemolytic anemia. We can see the steps of gluconeogenesis 2 here, which goes in reverse order as glycolysis, uh, where pyruvate it will start from here, the PEP, then PEP convert to 2 phospho, then to 3 phospho. You can see all the steps are going in reverse. That is for gluconeogenesis, that is formation of new glucose from the non carbohydrate compounds. The so non carbohydrate compounds that we have in gluconeogenesis are from the 3 carbon and the 4 carbon precursor, and gluconeogenesis happens in both mitochondria and cytoplasm. So the main substrate for gluconeogenesis are the amino acid, lactate, and the glycerol 3-phosphate. Also, the fate of pyruvate is important at what all compounds the pyruvate can form when it is metabolized. Like lactate dehydrogenase convert pyruvate to lactate. Pyruvate dehydrogenase convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate carboxylase convert pyruvate to oxaloacetate. While transaminase enzyme like pyruvate acted upon alanine aminotransferase can convert it to alanine. We can also see the glycogenases and the glycogenolysis here. So glycogenases, formation of glycogen from the glucose in the presence of glycogen synthase enzyme, while glycogenolysis is breakdown of glycogen into glucose in the presence of glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. Now what are the positive and the negative regulators of it? For example, glucagon, epinephrine, they're activating glycogen phosphorylase while glycogen synthase is activated by glucose itself and the insulin and UDP glucose acts as an important high energy intermediate molecule involved in glycogen synthesis. Now in this page we can see the citric acid cycle. That's an important cycle also called as the Krebs cycle. So in citric acid cycle, it happens in the mitochondrial matrix and happens only under the aerobic condition. So the pyruvate made by glycolysis is converted to acetyl-CoA in the presence of pyruvate dehydrogenase and this acetyl-CoA is going to start your citric acid cycle. The product will be formation of 3 NADH, 1 FADH2 and 1 GTP. No ATP is produced, it is GTP which is equivalent to ATP. So both the NADH and FADH2 which are being produced here or in the glycolysis, they will be traveling to the electron transport chain and each molecule of FADH2 is going to make uh, three molecules of ATP. 
Now we can see the oxidative phosphorylation or electron transport chain on the next slide. We know this pathway only happens in the presence of oxygen and it happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane that will pass the electron in a stepwise fashion from NADH and FADH2 finally to the oxygen. So oxygen is the final electron uh, acceptor of the electron transport chain and water is going to be final product. The electron transport chain, it's important for you to remember the name of the complexes like complex 1, NADH dehydrogenase, complex 2, succinate dehydrogenase and between the complex we also have a intermediate molecule called as coenzyme Q like between complex 2 and complex 3 or cytochrome C between complex 3 and complex 4 and the last complex complex 5 is called as FOF1 at, uh, ATP synthase. You also know the clinical correlation like cyanide poisoning or different inhibitors like uh, oligomycin, antimycin, how they are going to block uh, the electron transport chain and finally they are going to kill the cell because ATP synthesis will not happen. Hi, my dear student who are preparing for IMDD ADAT uh, part 2 exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this preview video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates on these past videos. Thank you. Have any questions? Please comment me in the box below. Hi, Dr. Sinner from Dental Wishes you all the best for the exam and thanks again for watching.